Hey guys, so today I want to talk to you all about goal setting, specifically spiritual goal settings, because so many times we set goals on the outside with our weight, with our eating, with our kids, homeschooling, whatever, but we don't think about our spiritual life and how we can also set goals within our spiritual life. So today's video is all about that, spiritual life goal setting 101. Welcome if you're new here, my name is Christina and this place is for moms that want to have more peace and less irritability and I share tools with you on the journey that have helped me tremendously handle what life throws my way and if you want to feel more calm and connected, then this place is for you. And the first place where I really want to invite you to consider is to reframe the whole spiritual goal setting because so many times we just have this idea of how we want to grow closer to Christ and then that's a really great goal to have. However, it's sort of like walking around aimlessly without having a clear target to look at. So many times I fall short on this goal because I feel like maybe I'm just not doing enough, but then I just think about it and I have to answer that for myself and think, well, what does that even mean? What does enough even mean? And then I realize that there's no real goal. There's no target for me to look at. I can't really measure. I could just decide that I did a good job. Yes. But I really want to grow in my faith. I really want to grow as a person. So setting goals is a really great way to really do that, to have actionable steps in order for you to say, okay, so maybe I could reevaluate this area of my life to make this more of a priority. Maybe I need to let go of this to make this more of a priority. Because when we have a goal and then we're going towards that goal, our brain has this focus and then everything else will come into play and then we can work our minds around that and manage our minds around all of that drama that can come up with that. And that's all that stuff that we really need to see for ourselves of how we are weak and we need to have these spiritual goals for reading the scriptures for attending liturgy and all these things so i really don't want you to reframe that goal spiritual having a spiritual goal is not really like a vague idea but you could really have an actionable steps that you can take in order to look at your life and move closer within the liturgical year move closer to christ throughout the year and every year every single year we get closer and closer and closer that's a really great path if you ask me. So the first place, some ideas for you to start off with is to start small. <laughs> we can really look at the overall picture of goal setting and say, yeah, I can do that. Oh, I can do that. That's easy. Or that's going to take 10 minutes. Or there's so many things to choose from. If you're part of the Orthodox Church, there's a lot to choose from that you could do as a goal. So if you are starting small, just do the next step. So the reason why you do the next step is just to gain some momentum and then you could reevaluate. So for example, if you are not going to liturgy every single week, maybe you could make it a goal to go to liturgy every single week. If you are not saying your prayers, evening prayers with your kids or morning prayers, whatever prayers with your kids by yourself, you're not saying those. Say that you will say prayers maybe once a week with your kids at nighttime if that's what you can actually do. The whole goal here, goal, goals, talking about goals, is to gain some momentum and then you can reevaluate and then add on if you feel like you can. So say you want to read the Bible within a year and you feel like you can do that because it seems like it's pretty actionable things that you can do and it's one year. But then all of a sudden you tend to fall short because of all the activities and things like that. So maybe that might not be so realistic for you. Maybe you need to start with just reading the daily scriptures for the church that we have available, I'm pretty sure, all over the websites. And even there's an app on your phone that's called Daily Readings that you can do instead of sitting down and having your study Bible with you. So maybe you can have that as a goal. So some ideas to really get you going. So the main whole focus is to think about the next step and intentionally having it be looking like it might be too easy. <laughs> But the whole goal is to have a 1% shift towards where you want to go. So which brings me to the next thing, which is some themes that you could set up around your goals for the year. 
And some themes might be something so simple like um, focusing on a saint for the saint's writings for a year, focusing on maybe reading the Psalms every day for a year, or st studying the Psalms, or maybe living out the liturgical year, looking at the fast of the church and actually doing the fast of the church as a family and reading about the fast of the church as a family maybe it is something else that stands up to you for for me a lot of things that are standing out to me recently has been just to focus a lot on connecting with people or and accepting things that are going the way that they are <laughs> within the world within my world everything so those two words people sometimes think of this as a word that they focus on or whatever you can do a word that you focus on but you can also have a theme that you can go with and anything else that you are focusing on spiritually throughout that theme can be podcasts or books that really inspires that theme for that year so for me what i plan on doing with connecting is connecting with my kids number one <laughs> because my love is how they will see god so that's really important for me to connect with my kids and actually know my kids hearts and connect with my spouse as well because I want him to know that I'm there for him I'm supporting him in this marriage so connecting with him on a real level means paying attention means paying means listening in my opinion <laughs> so another thing is connecting with all of you guys maybe on social media maybe really just asking deep questions maybe asking and getting to know some of you guys just getting to know you and connecting with you. That's been my priority that I think about when I think about actually doing the steps to fulfill that theme. Another theme that I'm really thinking about diving deep and deeper into is acceptance because my husband just did a talk on may it be blessed and how everything of this book is just about how you should say may it be blessed and I was thinking about this for the longest time when it comes to accepting things and I've had such a hard time doing that so many times in my life so why not <laughs> focus on acceptance how things are trying to give it all to God saying may it be blessed I know it's going to be hard but this is why I feel like I need to do it so a lot of it has to do with me feeling that resistance and me saying giving it up to Christ saying may it be blessed is a theme that I'm really trying to cultivate this year. So for you, it might be the liturgical year. Maybe it's about reading the Theotokos, reading about her life, doing the Akathis hymns to the Theotokos, uh, attending some services to the Theotokos is another thing that you could do as a theme for your year. So you could really start measuring it and seeing how it fulfills your life. And it really gives you so much more grace to be able to operate in your motherhood if you start living the spiritual life. Another thing that I really invite you to consider is actually doing the works of a Christian in your community because this is for a lot of people that can look at actionable things that they like to physically do i like to do a lot of these things because also i like to show my kids that it's important to give back to the community but things like you know visiting the sick can be hard nowadays especially with covid and you can't go anywhere you can't visit anybody anymore i feel like but that's a whole other topic, but there are other things that you can do. Maybe you could offer a meal to someone that has just given birth. There's a meal train thing set up. Maybe you could offer a meal to other people that are not part of your community. Maybe you could offer to give a helping hand in helping the homeless or feed the hungry. My husband does a prison ministry every single other week. And something maybe you can do to set up for the prisoners, maybe booklets or you know something to um, have them have your kids help the homeless with setting up homeless packages our women here do a packages for a pregnancy center and a parenting center where we set up gifts for new mothers with baby clothes and baby things so something like that you can i'm sure do or so so many times people ask us to pray for them Maybe you can pray for other people or setting up a prayer service for another person that you know is struggling. So something like acts of service that we can actually do, that's really helpful in terms of getting us closer to God's grace because that's what we were called to do. 
And finally, the last thing that I want to talk about that will help you hopefully in your spiritual life this year, if you think about it, are looking at the sacraments of the church. So looking towards the sacraments of the church because there's so much grace in the sacraments of the church. My husband said this to me the other day while there was a baptism that was happening and I was having kind of like a rough time. And then after the baptism, um, I asked him a question of, well, why do we even attend these services when we don't know the people that are like, for example, being baptized or being married, the sacraments of the church? And then he said, because of the grace from the sacrament. <laughs> and I was like, oh, duh, <laughs> because so many times, we can go and we can attend a baptism and that just reminds us of our own baptism and the vow that we made to the church to renounce Satan and all of his works to spit on the devil. So many great things are in those services. So I really invite you to look towards the sacraments of the church and look at how you can actually attend those services if you feel like you want some grace from that service. And also other things like confession. You know, going to confession regularly is a really big thing that so many of us struggle with, but it's also a sacrament or partaking in communion, you know, doing the prayers beforehand, going to confession beforehand, actually preparing for that also is a way to look towards the sacrament and let it guide you because the church has so many prayers that go out and so much grace spilled from those sacraments is the reason why it's so great to attend those services. Another thing is if you are married, maybe asking or maybe looking for ways to help your spouse because the marriage is a sacrament. So looking for ways to pray for your spouse, looking for ways to pray together. If you're married, this is such a thing to forget, especially when we have so many kids, but really asking yourself the question of how can I pray for my spouse? Because that leaves you to talk to them, to talk to him and ask him the questions of, can I help you? Can I pray for you? What's your intention? What are you hoping to accomplish this year? How can I help support you? How can I be there for you? So looking towards the sacrament will be my last thing that will help you hopefully grow spiritually. Let me know <laughs> what you're committed to in your spiritual goals this year. Name your one thing, your 1%, the thing that you're trying to go towards. I know this can be really, really hard for so many of us because we have this vague idea sometimes. So I really encourage you to just narrow it down and see where God takes you this year. I hope this has been helpful. If it has been, give it a big thumbs up. Take good care of yourself, mama. Bye.